Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, thank you for your testimony. General Raymond, as I indicated in my opening statement, uh, as the head of the new unified U.S. Space Command, you, you have to operate under the Goldwater-Nichols principles of integration, yet the vast majority of your personnel are U.S. Air Force personnel. How do you plan to go about that? Thank you. As Goldwater-Nichols reorganized, as you know, Senator, the department into two functions, an organized train and equipped function and a war fighting function. Mm -hmm. Today, I'm here to uh, testify on uh, on kind of two hats. The first hat is an Air Force Space Command hat, which is an organized train and equip hat, right. and the second hat is a U.S. Space Command hat, which is in that in that warfighting hat. Um, I, what I would say to you is that space. I am convinced that in the future, if we are going to get into a conflict with a, a peer uh, competitor, a near, near peer competitor, we're going to have to fight and win for space superiority. Mm -hmm. That's going to require the total force. That's not just a space fight. That's the, the full weight of the Joint Force, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines have to come together to do that, and I'm, I'm confident that we've got Goldwater Nichols uh, just right and that this will, will feed, uh, feed that going forward. Just to follow up, as part of that, you will be trying to integrate training exercises, perhaps virtual exercises initially, but ultimately physical exercises with other service components as part of your unified command. Absolutely, we do that today, and we'll continue to do that in the future. Thank we you. do that today under the U.S. Strategic Command, uh, Unified Command. Very good. Thank you, sir. And Dr. Scalise, in your response to the committee's APQs, you uh, said operational decisions on space defense or space control issues affecting NRO satellites should be made not by the commander of U.S. Space Command, but by the NRO director, even during a, an actual conflict. General Raymond, I believe, provided us a different answer, stating that he can see a time when we'll need to change the current status quo. So can you two both, beginning with Dr. Sleese, clarify where we have to head to have a coordinated response, uh, particularly in a conflict situation? I believe it's absolutely imperative that we work together uh, and, and that uh, we train and work together uh, so that we, when we do end up in a conflict situation, that we know how we're going to operate and we know who is going to operate, uh, and that we have to simply do that together. So I'm committed, if confirmed, to working with uh, General Raymond and, and, uh, and U.S. Space Command uh, to make sure that we have a coordinated effort, understand what each other's roles and responsibilities are, and execute them effectively depended on the particular situation that we're involved but in. Typically, at some point, particularly in a stressful period of time, someone has to have the last word because you can coordinate as much as you want, but there might be a difference of opinion. Yeah, I do you maintain that NRO director should have the last word in terms of deployment at all times? I think it depends on the situation, so I would not say at all times, okay. but I think it depends very much on the situation that uh, you're involved in. General Raymond, your comments. Thank you. The UCP uh, change that establishes the missions for U.S. Space Command is pretty clear. It states that protecting and defending U.S. Um, and as directed allied partner and commercial space uh, capabilities is the responsibility of U.S. Space Command Commander. Today, we work very closely, very closely with the NRO. The relationship has never been better. And today, on a day-to-day -day effort, we, we operate at what we call unity of effort. Uh, I am convinced that as we stress this and as we go forward to higher states of readiness and the exercises that, that in your previous question, that we need to make sure that that unity of effort is the proper relationship at, at that level to be able to protect and defend those capabilities. Uh, SPD4, the Space Policy Directive 4, directs uh, the departments to come back together with recommendations and we'll, we'll test that and, and bring that back as part of the SPD4 process. I have very few uh, seconds remaining, but 20 years ago, General Eberhard commented that he didn't think the acquisition process was well coordinated between NRO and uh, Space Command at the time. I alluded to in my opening statement the, the proposals by DOD to acquire commercial satellites and to put up a whole constellation of these relatively inexpensive. My, the NRO opposed, I think, that proposal. Uh, this might be something we'll have further conversations on, but General Raymond, do, do you see the, the, your role of being able to, to develop and launch satellites in cooperation with, but not exclusively through NRO? I do, and we've, we, 
we've actually made some progress on this in the last couple of years. We had a satellite program that we were going to launch uh, from the Air Force in my Air Force in my current Air Force hat. It was the follow-on to a space surveillance satellite, and it turned out when we did the analysis that that satellite wasn't going to meet, meet our mission needs. The NRO had a, a satellite that they were building that when we did the analysis said that's exactly what we need. So we canceled that program and partnered with the NRO in combined efforts to be able to do that, uh, uh, getting a capability on orbit faster for, for a, a better value for the American taxpayer. So I, if confirmed, I will continue that effort. I think there's great partnership to be had, and, and we need to leverage each other's capabilities depending on the the capability that we're developing. But there may be occasions where DOD satellite programs would be more effective for the warfighter than, um, and if you felt that way, you would you would try to insist upon it? I, w I would insist on a great working relationship. There's, what I have learned in, in my current position over the last two and a half years, that when the Air Force and the NRO come in in lockstep, we're hard to beat. And when we come in uh, separated, uh, we don't do as well. Yeah. Finally, for the record, I'm going to give you a chance. You got a shout out for the Bulldogs. Don't we owe one to the Cyclones? The Cyclones. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Senator Reed. Can Senator I give a shout out to Clemson Tigers? It's too good. That's where I went. <laughs> <laughs>